Hey you guys, I'm Steven. I'm Giselle. And we're the Lovers Passport and today we're going to be taking you guys around Edmonton. We're going to be starting off in Elk Island National Park. It is about a 30 minute drive from Edmonton, so we recommend spending at least a half day to a full day there. This area was founded in 1906 as an elk preserve, but now the most seen animal in this area is the bison. We just got here to Elk Island National Park. It's actually the first day it's been open since- <gasps> I see a bison. March 2020. <laughs> Steven's excited. When we were driving the bison loop, there had to be over two dozen bison. But if you guys cannot see them, we recommend coming back during sunrise or sunset because that is when most of the bison are going to be out and roaming. This is also a great spot to watch the Aurora Borealis if it is a clear night because it is dark sky preserved. We are just finishing up here at Elk Island National Park. It is a perfect little spot, especially if you only want to come for a few hours during sunrise or sunset. That is when you guys are going to see the most wildlife, but fun little park to enjoy during the winter or the summer. Yes, and now we're going to be making our way back town or making our way back downtown to Edmonton. We're going to check into our hotel. We're going to go explore White Avenue and some other spots that we recommended and then we're going to have some dinner. We stayed at the JW Marriott Hotel in downtown Edmonton. We just checked in here at the JW Marriott and we are staying in the Ice District. So we are right next to where the Edmonton Oilers play. There's an ice skating rink right outside our room and we'll give you a little room tour. So in here we have the bathroom. It's huge and there's a door that like connects to the bedroom which is kind of fun. So you can like open and close it at your discretion. Super. So this hotel is really nice and like modern. Everything is lined here. Everything's super nice and neutral. It has all the amenities. And then I think the best part about this room is the city view. So we got a nice view of downtown Edmonton right outside the window. We have the best view of Edmonton over here. We're at the River Valley Overlook and it's right next to Queen Elizabeth Park. And both of these areas are great spots to view the sunset. You get a nice view of both the bridges here in Edmonton. Do allot yourself some time to get over here because the bridge traffic at sunset time, pretty bad. Otherwise, it's just a beautiful view to take in, especially at nighttime. And we'll probably be back over here tomorrow for sunrise along this side of the city. All right, we're gonna go look for some food and get the adventures in Edmonton going. Our first dinner we had in Edmonton was at this restaurant called Range Road and we had no idea what we were getting into when we got there. First of all, you do want to make reservations because this restaurant gets very crowded very quickly because it's so good. We had an amazing waiter named Rob and he recommended this thing called the Road Trip and that's what they're famous for. They're a big farm to table restaurant and so the Road Trip gives you six to seven courses of fresh local Canadian farm to table food. So we had everything from butternut squash to fish to pasta to elk to this amazing like creme brulee-ish dessert. But every dish was so unique and so delicious and the flavors were popping in every single bite. So we recommend that and ordering some cocktails there. So it's definitely a culinary experience in itself and it was one of the best dinners we had in our life, honestly. It was, but it was definitely the best dinner we had while we were visiting Canada this trip. Good morning. We are watching sunrise over the city. This is called Roland Heights Lookout. It is a stunning view of the city. It's a great walk, spot to watch sunrise. Last night, we went to RGE Road. It was an amazing, amazing experience from beginning to end. We had a seven course meal it for dinner. It was the best meal we've had in Canada. If you guys have a night in Edmonton, highly recommend checking out that spot. Today, we wanted to see sunrise. We had some breakfast in bed and we are gonna be going on a Segway tour today. So super excited about that, being able to explore Edmonton in a different way. Neither of us have ever done one before, so it should be kind of fun. We loved doing our Segway tour around Edmonton with River Valley Adventure Company and it's the number one thing to do in Edmonton on TripAdvisor actually and we were curious because you know if it's a Segway tour is the number one thing to do we were intrigued by how fun it was gonna be so we ended up having an absolute blast our tour lasted about an hour to an hour and a half 
It had a safety briefing, we learned how to use them, and then we headed off in this giant loop around the city where we could see all the beautiful bridges, the architecture, learn some of the history. It was really, really fun. So we did it in the winter, obviously. It is a little more icy, so you do have to be a little more cautious when you're driving the Segway, but we love doing it, and we would just recommend wearing some layers, some gloves, bringing maybe some hand warmers, because it does get really chilly riding around in the cold, so just especially gloves, bring some extra layers so you stay warm. In the summer, though, they do have these tours going all day long. Our tour guide said that they last from like 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. of just straight tours. And he also recommended doing the Sunset Segway tour if you get the chance in the summer. I got my Segway license, you guys. <laughs> all right, so we just picked up our negative COVID tests. You do need a negative test to get back into the United States. So we did a rapid antigen test like two minutes away from our hotel. Results are ready in 30 minutes, so that was super nice. We're gonna explore the city a little bit more. We want to go to this like, um, it's called some like White Avenue Lights Festival, so we're excited. If you are fully vaccinated, getting into Canada is pretty easy. You are required to show a pre-entry molecular test, so a negative PCR test. You do have to download this app or use the website called ArriveCan and they will give you a barcode to scan when you do arrive in Canada. And you may or may not be required to take an arrival test if you're randomly selected at the border. We both didn't have to do that though, but it does happen. And then as long as you are meeting all these requirements, you are exempt from quarantine and exempt from day eight testing. There may be some other exemptions or restrictions, but we just recommend checking out the um, Canadian COVID website. So since it changes so often and since restrictions can ease and get harsher pretty quickly. So just keep your eyes out on the situation, but we'll link everything down below for you guys. We are out here doing the Fort Edmonton Park Loop Trail. It's about 2.9 miles round trip, very minimal elevation gain. There's a lot of fat tire bike riders out here, a lot of people walking their dogs, just people who want a nice little stroller or running. And you have a nice little view of the Saskatchewan River the whole way through. Um, I can imagine too, there's a ton of like aspen trees and some other stuff out here. So if you're coming in the fall, I bet it would be popping off with fall colors too but the snow makes a really nice backdrop against the river and watching the ice slow down it's kind of soothing so yeah this is a nice little walk around the neighborhood kind of thing and we're gonna be cruising another thing that we loved about edmonton was the beautiful bridges the walter dale bridge was probably our favorite it was gorgeous during the day and even prettier at night because it had lights that were flickering all over it with the beautiful city behind it you will drive across this quite a few times and we even went across it on our segway tour we are here at the walter dale bridge it's probably my favorite view of the city in all of edmonton you can see the beautiful skyline you have the river down below and this bridge is just gorgeous. We're gonna go find a good place for dinner. It's been an awesome day exploring Edmonton and going through a few of the hikes. There are a few different districts in Edmonton. Our two favorite districts were the Ice District and the White Avenue area. White Avenue is known for great shopping, great drinks, and when we happened to visit, they were also having a winter festival. And It was such a fun Christmas vibe. It really got us in the holiday spirit. And even though it was cold outside, there were tons of fire pits that you could go up and warm yourself to. It's right next to the Christmas market in Old Strathcona, and that's where they normally have farmer's markets every Saturday, but they turned it into a winter wonderland with tons of Christmas lights. They had ice carving, they had magicians and comedians, they had a little raffle area for people that came, so it was just a really nice area to check out while we were there. They also had some food trucks and some kettle corn trucks, so it was a great way to get into the holiday spirit. We also checked out Sugared and Spice, which is a bakery right off of White Avenue, and they were open during this Christmas market, and they had the best cookie dough cheesecake bites, and we got some snickerdoodles and a peanut butter marshmallow dream bar, and we definitely recommend if you're into pastries, checking them out. They were all super nice, and all of their pastries were fantastic. It was definitely one of the more lively parts of the city, and just a very beautiful area. It does get super congested in terms of traffic because it is very popular down there. But if you want a nice night out shopping and going to fancy dinner restaurants, there's tons over in the White Avenue area. And right next to White Avenue is actually the River Valley area. And we loved going over there for sunrise and sunset. It's a great view of the cityscape of Edmonton. And you also get a beautiful view of 
the river over there. So definitely recommend checking all three of these areas out. Another thing to see down in the ice district near downtown is the Neon Lights Museum. We recommend seeing an Oilers game at the arena and then going directly after to check out the Neon Lights Museum. It is open 24 hours. You can see it right off the road and it has a lot of fun ways that you can photograph it. In terms of how to get to Canada, we took a new flight from Swoop Airlines direct from San Diego to Edmonton. It's about a three hour flight, it's brand new, and we were honestly pretty impressed. They're known for having ultra inexpensive flights, and it was really nice to see that we could get to Canada on such a budget. Now you do have to pack light unless you wanna pay for extra baggage, and you do have to bring your own snacks and drinks because they don't have a typical bar cart kind of service on the airplane but if you are just looking for a nice and easy non-stop direct flight in between southern california and edmonton swoop was really nice to just hop on and be there within three hours we had a lot of leg room there were outlets on the flight and everyone was pretty nice so definitely recommend checking out swoop airlines if you are interested in heading out to edmonton from san diego all right and that is it for our trip here to edmonton edmonton was a really cool city we actually enjoyed it more during the night than we did during the day the lights come on it's a beautiful town just make sure you check it because during the winter they do get freeze rain so it can be a little sketchy to drive on the road but other than that really fun being able to explore edmonton and see all the beauty of it it has banff right next to it jasper's right next to it calgary's not too far so there's a lot of really cool spots to check out and on your next trip we would recommend visiting either during the late earlier summer like june or visiting a little bit later in the year like september we heard you do not want to be here around march or april because that's when all the snow melts it looks a little brown so make sure you plan your trip accordingly yeah and with that thanks so much for watching and we will see you on the next adventure